This week, Aichi's Psyqualia talked to him. It gave him irreplaceable advice, simply put as, Guard, stupid! The greatest advice one could get when you are obviously about to lose if you don't do said thing. And then after Aichi did said thing, he was given even better advice. He was told, Eh, I don't know. I got nothing. This ain't advice. We don't know what we're doing. This is just a dumb shonen. Ha ha! So, yeah, uh, this week, uh, Aichi lost to Tetsu, which I enjoyed, actually. I liked that the Psyqualia isn't a be-all, end-all, unbelievable power like it was in the original series. This time around, Psyqualia is much more grounded. It's presented in a much more realistic manner. It's not this sort of mystical, magical force out there. No, it's this sort of weird cognitive. It's not fully understood, but those who see it have enough of a grasp of what it does to sort of put it in a relatable context. And showing that you can have it and lose is also good. The simple fact of the matter is No Life King is a very powerful card. Like, simply put, it can't easily just as be beaten as, here's what I can magically do, like, no, you still have to have skill and you still have to be able to play. It's not a crutch, it can help you a bit, but ultimately you are the fighter and you have to make the choice. Just as Aichi is still making the choice to hold what's dear, that being fighting for friendship and wanting to have relationships, where Ren has just given in to wanting power. It's a nice little bit and I like the whole scene from there. From there we actually move through things pretty quickly, which I like. Fast pace, fast momentum, get through as much plot as possible so that way we can show off more new clans to make you buy more product. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed the sort of just Kai and Miwa just go in and just start kicking ass. Like, it's just sort of a cool bit where it's just sort of like all these guys are like, Oh my god, what do we do? There's a guy whose only real social life involves card games. Ah! Like, I just like that idea that even Miwa kind of gets a bit of redemption. Just sort of like, eh, he still beats everyone else up. And I like that we don't even need to see the Asuka and him fight. But we just get everything we need to know from the way she's down. And he's just like on the couch. Didn't even break a sweat. I love the way he sits on the couch too. Arms out, legs crossed. Just like, I'm a boss. Bend over, bitch. It really is a cool bit. And I like the whole sort of setup with Ren. Uh, first up, the way that, uh, what's her name, uh, Masaki sort of <laughs> grabs Aichi like that has many a Aichi Kai shippers mad, uh, many a Aichi Masaki shippers happy. I just kind of thought it was a fun little scene. I like when she's holding him and Aichi makes his face like, girl holding me, what do now? Uh, that's a good bit right there. And you could also kind of read into it a little bit and sort of so that Masaki saw what Ren can do, so she knows to be afraid of him. And she also may be a little afraid for sort of Aichi's well-being, considering how he was last time he was in a real serious fight against Leon. Maybe it brings up more of a maternal protective instinct. Maybe it's just the fear of Ren. Like, it's a nice little bit, and I like that it's sort of given this little levity to it with Aichi's expression, because it is a fun scene. And also, the sort of way they're handling Ren, I actually quite like. Ren's not an evil person, he's not a villain, he's this messed up kid who's sort of more or less a man possessed. It's a really nice bit and I like that Ren still has that kindness to help Aichi get back to the card shop. He still tries to be friendly with people. It kind of makes the world feel a bit more realistic. Like there's more to just Ren there's playing Vanguard than playing Vanguard. There is this guy who Probably if you just ran into him on the street, you probably would think was an okay, just kind of aloof dude. They don't play him up as anything more than that, and when it is time to play him up, when he gets mad after he finds out Aichi beat Ren Kai, he makes this face that isn't evil, it's not necessarily scary, it looks like a man's sick. And that is very clearly the angle they're playing up here. Psyqualia isn't this bizarre magic, it is a sickness, one you have to learn to live with and learn to control. Ren hasn't done this because Ren chooses to use his psyqualia to make himself feel stronger and more powerful. He's not using it in a healthy way. And I like that very realistic point they're taking to it. And then from there, I like the idea that they just hear Ren's there and they just go to the, go to the headquarters. Like, no, I'll beat you next time or anything. It's like, hey, everyone want to go over? Could you just imagine what that Uber ride must have been like? One lunatic and just, like, one kid who looks like he's on his deathbed and two people just confused. <laughs> the driver's like, I gotta get a better job than this. The one thing that bothers me, the one thing, 
Why is King of Knights Alfred only being used when Aichi loses? Like, seriously, Alfred is a very good card, considering Alfred early and Soul Saver aren't that great. Why is it Aichi never uses this thing to win? It makes me, as a royal player, feel very sad. It would be the equivalent if, like, Kai had not used Dragonic Waterfall yet, and my premiere in the fight where he loses to Ren as just, like, a weird final boss like they did for Dragonic Overlord the end. Oh, shit, that's probably what they're gonna do, isn't it? Oh, God, I feel the darkness approaching. But let's not talk about that right now. Right now, I have a very important TCG or card fight question of the week. Still haven't settled on a name. And that is, are you okay with Neo Nectar doing token generation? This is the first time we've seen that implemented in this game, and, well, a part of me wonders if it's okay for tokens to be in this game. A big sort of portion of what you do when you play Vanguard is thinking about how do you manage keeping shield in the hand, but also making your columns on the board stronger. If cards can just generate tokens and you can just hold on to hand, does that give them a bit of an unfair advantage? I know a lot of the Neo Nectar cards that have been revealed are getting hype, so... I don't know. Uh, tell me what you think of that in the comment section below. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and let's pray to God Dragonic Waterfall gets a better treatment than just being the thing that loses to Phantom Blaster Dragon.